you guys are gonna journey your way. You're gonna say your farewells to the to the caravan for right now, and you will make your way in through the woods and go into the deep roads via the exit that that Kenna and friends had used to come out into the woods, into the dales. Um, and you're gonna travel through the deep roads for quite some time. I'm gonna say that a couple days pass because the deep roads are very expansive and huge and large, and it's so easy to like get lost in them. However, with the help of especially Baum and Darethan, who are used to the deep roads, I'm sure you guys can help navigate each other around very well. We probably actually, um, the two of us, spent most of our time in this outer region because we weren't quite as much in the, in the settlements. So yeah. While you guys are journeying, Connor is actually going to uh, walk at some point. We'll say like after day two, he's going to walk uh, next to Leon at some point. And uh, he's going to sort of uh, pull him aside and say, he's, I think he's going to actually take his arm. He's going to wrap it around Leon's shoulder <laughs> and be like, so um, fellow circle mage, you want to you wanna walk over here for a second with me? I just imagine, hello, fellow uh, uh, student. <laughs> um, I don't know if you... I feel like I've I've seen you around the white because remember Gwene, uh, uh, Connor was from the White Spire, so I'm sure you've I don't know if you've really had much interaction with him. He's sort probably of like an not. upper. He he probably is the equivalent of like um he's he's probably he's graduated like before yeah, you. Yeah, alumni. So he's sort of more he's an alumni, I guess. Yeah. So he sort of like wraps his arms around you and says, "So um." I uh, was talking a little bit with um, with one of my what fun are our old friends Rosie, and uh, oh. I just I just wanted to chat with you, you know, from one circle mage to another. Uh, y- yeah, yes. Anything in um, <clears throat> particular? Well, um, I just want to let you know that um, I do understand what you're going through, um, being a member of the circle mage and having feelings and um i hope you know that obviously ever since gwinnell kind of took over he's been a lot more lenient instead of in in fact encouraging of people pursuing specific feelings and specific emotions when it comes to fondness for people of the opposite sex or same sex you know Yes, but, you know, as well as I, you know, the harrowing and, well, the fade in general can be interesting, to say the least. Of course, which is something that Cedric's always, you know, been very helpful with me for, and I'm assuming your Templar, he's looking at Sir Garrison, has been helping with you as well with your mental exercises? He's more on the physical side, but, you know. I-, I gotcha, and I would be more than happy to talk to you more about the physical side of oh. these things. But I feel like Theobin's better equipped to, to, with that than I am. Wait, what? The- Theobin is... He's got diagrams about the physical side of things. Uh, um... But I'm not well, here to talk to you about the physical. I'm talking about the emotional, the emotional oh, side of things. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. The emotional uh, side. Yes. <clears throat> uh, well, you see, uh, things have been very turbulent recently, especially with the dark spawn and now dragons and well, this. How do you? maintain your willpower over well (laughs) everything i mean by having a purpose i guess and ken has been my purpose our child's been my purpose and that's helped give me clarity yeah yeah purpose would help what's your purpose leon I've been focusing on, well, my research. Um, he sort of glances down at his book bag, thinking about Pyrus, but you know, it sort of looks like he's thinking about his other research. 
there's been a lot of questions I need to answer. It's been challenging, some of that, and I'm worried that I'll miss the forest for the trees. I get that. I get that. Well, I'm really happy to hear that you're so focused on your research and, you know, the pursuit of knowledge. I'm, and I'm not belittling that by any, any shape or form as a circle mage myself, but um, I guess I, what I'm trying to say is that there are, I would encourage you to, to spread your, your horizons a little bit. I think there yeah. are so much to learn. There's so much to learn about life and about things that really make you truly happy and passionate beyond just the knowledge, like book knowledge. Yeah. But sometimes you get a little shackled. He sort of mildly gestures to Sir Garrison. How did you, uh, well, break away? Break away? What do you mean, break away? Well, it's nice and all having a shadow, but sometimes you want to, well, be on your own. Yeah, I, I guess I could say that. I, like I said, Cedric was sort of like my Templar, I suppose, and I think that he gave me space when I needed it, and I think it didn't hurt that I think Kenna kind of helped sway things in that direction as well. So, in your case, um, yeah, I mean, I guess just try to form some kind of rapport as much as you can with with Sir Garrison. You may you don't necessarily need to like him as a friend, but I think that if once you have some sort of an understanding with each other. I know he can be really hard on some of the people that he's in charge of, but he does mean well. Yes, I can see he takes his job very seriously. It's just, I've not had an opportunity to <laughs> come to terms with what's going on in my life to really worry about <laughs> someone else's. I think that, um, I think that if you have to be shackled to someone like that, maybe it would help to not necessarily see him as a shackle per se. Maybe is more like a a brace, I suppose is a better way of putting it. I've been um, trying to, as Cedric says, uh, see him as a protector, but it's a little hard when, and then he says this under his breath, he killed your parents, but, you know. Oh. Oh, I didn't catch that part. I see. That's, <clears throat> yeah, that's it's, awkward. Yeah, and we just, well, I just went and saw the house, and it's a big nod of do you want me to try to say something to Cedric and maybe reassign you? I'm afraid, you know how Cedric is. I know he means well and everything, but I'm afraid that the idea of wanting to be reassigned because of personal emotions would be seen as a weakness and a lack of willpower. And I know he means well, and he's got a lot of responsibility, and he probably just chose any ran the next Templar who walked through his door, but... Yeah, that's true. Well, the offer is there. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, and I I do appreciate it. And, well, <laughs> I'm sure that we'll want to, well, compare notes, as you said, about our times in the circle. Like, uh, how did you, what did you research? What was your main purpose there, I guess? <laughs> that's a good question. Well. Um, I'm an arcane warrior of sorts, kind of oh. arcane-ish warrior of sorts, but 
my focus, well, most arcane warriors focus more on hand-to-hand -hand fighting with blades. I, first of all, wield wands. Most, many of mages use staffs, but you can also use wands. Um, and it says, and I focus on shields. And he basically um, makes a beautiful looking tower shield appear from the end of his wand. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite the feat. He sort of like taps it a few times. How did you get it so sturdy? It's... Like I said, it's a lot of research. But I think that, um, I think I've been helping pave the way to a lot more I guess arcane warriors like me, who focus a lot more on shields than defense than offense. Huh. Wonder if you could make like a a, a rod that you hold on to that conjures a blade instead of a shield. Then and... perhaps I wouldn't be surprised. But at any rate, um, just just wanted to get a chance to I I don't know exchange a few circle magey things. Yeah. And I do appreciate it. I know that with all these uh, new folk joining the party, it's hard to get a chance to talk to folk. And we'll be depending on you to, well, get our backs, protect ourselves. I will definitely try my best, but um, I feel like Bomb's going to do most of that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> While this conversation is happening, speaking of Bomb, he is going to be walking close to Tyrion, and I'm going to say that Rousseau is going to be within earshot of this, so he can or he can either just listen to this conversation or participate it. It's up to Rousseau. But uh, Baum is going to go approach Tyrion, and he'll say, So I've been told that you are a doctor of sorts. Um, no, oh, Sir Baum, uh, yes. Yes, he kind of looks a little different. Um, I am a doctor. Apologies if I sound frightened, but uh, I just don't expect to meet people who are about double my height and more. I've heard that a few times before, so it's to be understood. Tell me, Dr. Tyrion. Tyrion's also fine. Do not. I don't use titles. I have lived my entire life being around titles, so I think it would be more comfortable for me to refer to you by your title. Understood. Dr. Tyrion, have you ever considered or explored experimental medicine? No, not really. I mostly uh, well, learned from anatomy understanding, understanding of uh, most races' bodies, and bandaging up wounds and stitching them up, um, and the occasional medical care assistance, and that uh, particular interesting case, um, I won't mention that, very confusing, um, but... I was just noticing that you seem to be very learned in anatomy, especially when you were investigating the anatomy of that darkspawn. Yes, that is true. Since you seem to be so learned about anatomy, have you ever heard of the the experimental branch of medicine known as acupuncture. I know of it. Uh, well, hard anyway. It's the learning way of using medicine to help with specific points of the body. Yes. The theory is that the your body is essentially a vessel of this inner energy, this inner chi. Some people refer to it as chi. Some people refer to it as chakra. And by using needles to basically apply focused pressure on specific parts of the body, you essentially are able to achieve certain physical and emotional and mental effects on the chakra itself, therefore rejuvenating the body, healing the body, and various other things. That is an interesting system. Have, are you a practitioner? I was back in the day, back in ancient Tevinter's times, when my hands were, let's say, a lot less beefier. Beefier. <laughs> I see. More specifically, I was a masseuse by trade. However, I dabbled in acupuncture. 
my abilities of massaging, fortunately, I've managed to maintain, even with these. However, in order to use acupuncture, it requires a little bit more of a deft hand, per se. I'm unable to do acupuncture, acupuncture and others. However, I was wondering if you would be open for me teaching you a few techniques. He kind of thinks for a bit, says, that is, I mean, I would not be opposed. That would be interesting to learn. We, I am trying to learn. Stitching and bending wounds have been my style, but to learn another form would be interesting. So, yes, if I have the time, I would. Are you going to be with us? I plan to be, if you will have me. After all, you are traveling with Dertham, and now that he and I are together, I am making him my highest priority at the moment. Apologies to ask a little bit of a personal question, um, Sir Balm. Um, what's your relationship with Sir Dertham? I don't know, of course, you seem to know each other. I'm guessing you know somehow in the past? They knew each other before. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, uh, Russo. He is correct. We are best friends. For a very long time. Even in the times of Darkspawn? Even during the times of Darkspawn. Surprise you know, at least, Russo. I'm not 100% c cognizant and aware of at that time. But I do feel that we did protect each other during those dark times. So, Russo, you, how do you know that, that they know each other? Uh, well, let's just say during a mutual chat me and Daratham had, he brought up a friend that grew a blue mustache, and I figured that was Balm. Ah. Uh. Hopefully he didn't have another friend with a blue mustache that he didn't tell me about. Have you met anyone else with another one? No. Not that I know of. The only blue mustache I see is uh, Balm over here. And believe me, if I saw blue mustache, I would no recognize it. Um, I just kind of perk up and you'd hear Daretham shout out. Well, you know, I did see this one man in a diva. He had quite a fabulous one. It was more cyan, but frankly, it might have been an improvement. Oh, he, you are cruel, Dertham. <laughs> I only speak honesty. And with that, I see I have been replaced. Are you looking for a new best friend, Dr. Tyrion? Uh, what? I can't have two best friends? Oh, you wound me. Apparently, you can only have one with a blue mustache, apparently. <laughs> it's a cyan mustache. It's, the, it's not the same. It's called it's colors. best friend because you're the best friend about all others. Therefore, a best friend is supposed to be one. But what if you could have more than one best friend? Well, I suppose if you're into that kind of stuff, then who am I to judge? <laughs> I think there might be into mustaches too much. <laughs> No, Daretham's into choking. Oh, hey! <laughs> Stops for a second, thinks back. That was confidential. You don't tell anyone else. You deserve that. Dar <laughs> he he Point, says. But still. I must write this in my medical journal. Uh... In, 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 his, in his mind, Theo's sketching a new diagram. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Mom. I, I will consider... I, I will take up that offer. Whenever I'm not training with guns or trying to help patients. About how long do you think it'd take to teach Tyr in that? Depends on how brilliant of a doctor he is. Might be a little bit then, friend. Would you like to volunteer as his first guinea pig? Guess I walked into that. Sure. Why don't we do so this evening when we're about to turn in for the night? Very well. I will try my best. All right, Tyrion, go ahead and roll a medicine roll as um, Bomb will try to instruct you. Okay. 
16 with two sum points. Oh my gosh, good job, Taryn. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Train so with that, Tiran is going to um, administer some uh, acupuncture on, um, attempt to do some basic acupuncture on um, Rousseau. And with that, uh, he will be able to unlock a little bit of his chakra abilities, which means that Rousseau, you can effectively now add two points, two chakra points to your chakra. Um, well, right now. Tiran, the chakra giver. <laughs> Turn that is, is, is going to ask Rousseau, how do you feel? Not gonna lie, that's the first time I've had someone prod me with needles. Um, you hear that song slightly better now? You can hear the song better? Yeah, I mean, then again, we did find out I am scaled. Wait a minute, Chakra. The acupuncture allows you to, allows me to, allows someone to try to open it up i will say i wasn't ready for my joints to be this loose so how do you think um... i think that if you continue practicing you will be better at it and if what mr rousseau says is true perhaps you will unlock something within him as well but tyrion is like he's just looking at like wow but I think as if you tell me that Tyrion is spending time learning about acupuncture, he'll probably be able to, right, to be yeah. able to do it to more people per day, once per day. Imagine he does two people he just does this. <laughs> no, it's just like his, it's just like his throwing knives. Yeah. He's just kind of he just takes the needle, just <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he sets them up on the circus throwing knife board, but he has right, needles. Yeah. And he, goes, he just spins it, and then he just goes... <laughs> just getting in a fight, and he throws a whole bunch of needles. Out, oh, thanks! <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. and, and they're all with strings. You got six more chakra points now. <laughs> and they're all with strings, and at all the same time, he just pulls all the strings, and all the needles come back. Uh. So you guys will turn in for the night. Um... And then the next morning rolls around uh, and you guys are starting to clean up your camp when you realize someone's missing. You take a look around and where's Sir Garrison? Dun, dun, dun. Sir Garrison's missing. Hey, um, Leon, did you, did you, where did, well, did you see Sir Garrison? Are you guys seeing Sir Garrison? Um, he's usually an early riser. Um. But he wouldn't have just wandered off like that. Um, is anyone good at tracking? I'll, I'll try to look around. Um, oh, right, go. Nope, nope, nope. Could I try to make a magical to see if there's any sort of magical presence, maybe using taint magic? Sure. Okay. Okay, so uh, which one is Sir Garrison again? The Templar. Yeah, the the Templar. Templar the Knight. Uh, Theo, Theo was asking that in, in character. Yeah, that's what we got. Uh, <laughs> okay. 20 with six stun points to sense for magic of specifically the taint variety. You you feel something magical in the taint variety. You feel something. But then you sort of get like a interference, like a flash of something, and you can you can hear... <laughs> this maniacal laughter in your head. Nobody else can hear this. Only Daretham can hear this. And you just see a flash of jagged, bloody teeth. Jagged, the tea, the blood, red blood like dripping down this, the, the dagger like uh, fangs or like rock sharp, sharp edged, razor sharp edged teeth just for a splash a moment and then you get like kicked out of your sense of magic ability and like you can't right now it's just interfering with your ability to sense yeah. magic in there and everyone would see Darth and he like closed his eyes when he was kind of looking around his brow furrowed a bit and then he would just <coughs> Darth what happened I don't entirely know Russo did you find any tracks know. Not a one. I think same here. Um, Lady Ken or um, Sir Theoben, would you two be able to help out with this? Let's... 
Bomb, I'm trying my best. Um, I'm gonna look over immediately to Bomb and say, Bomb, have there been any new awakened mages? Unfortunately, your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Well, I'm gonna go over to dare them. Hey, buddy, that was not usually what happens when you try to feel around for magic. Something going on? I sensed taint magic. But before I could get a read on it, I heard laughter. And I saw bloody, th- bloody teeth. It's not the calling, is it? No. No, the calling, it's... I think... I think it's a new awakened. I'm worried that, you know how the architect, or how someone awakened the darkspawn, maybe there's a force that's causing these weird darkspawn as well. Could you get a read on where it's coming from? So, could I sense that, like, in our immediate, like, campsite area? Or was it in, like, the, a specific bedroll or a specific spot? It feels like in your campsite area in general, you can feel it. And then, I'm gonna say, though, that with, uh, um, even with a 12, when you hear, when you're trying to remember the sound of the laughter, you can't help but feel like the laughter sounds familiar. You feel like you've heard that laughter before. Does it feel like a memory from my time as a dark spawn? Like a like a vague memory that has to be triggered? I would say no, not during your time as a dark spawn. I would say no. A death of, was the laughter masculine or feminine? Sounded masculine. Leon's getting a sickening feeling. Could it be caused because of Sir Garrison's uh, disappearance? I think the creature... I think he took Sir Garrison. What creature exactly? Connor asks. I don't know. Rosie looks very worried and she's going to like, you know, grab a hold of Leon's hand. Uh, see, re- 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 replaced already. Leon's <laughs> <laughs> gonna give her hand a squeeze. Leon, do you have any alternative tracking method? Because right now we're not finding anything. There if you sense um, something, maybe you would. Wait, didn't uh, Theoban and uh, yes, made a Sam, Sam, Sam and I made uh, rolls. Um, fourteen and fourteen I'd... for Sam and seventeen for Theo. Will this count as the physical thing to do with advantage? A physical, yeah, you can take advantage. <laughs> Go, Sam. I'll, I'll let you take. I'll take. I'll let you take advantage. That's fine. Better. Nineteen. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Can, uh, you will. You will see what looks like um, footprints in the dirt, faint footprints of what appears to be um, the size of of Sir Garrison's shoes or boots. So you believe, and they do seem to be like leaving. They seem to be fresh enough that they're leaving the camp area and it's, it's going down deeper into the tunnels, into the, the maze of tunnels. With the 19, would I be, is it singular tracks by himself? Yes, singular tracks by himself. And do Correct. they look like, um, like he was running or just walking? It looks like he was walking. Okay. I've got boot tracks. Looks like he went this way. Looks like he just walked. Oh, does that man go on the revenge spree? Oh, lordy. Oh, I'd say let's find him. Agreed. We need lights down here. Don't worry about that. I know. (laughs) Right there to sort of illuminate. Forgot guardian of light. Of (laughs) Aether. I'm here to help. (laughs) At your service. Well, considering she could turn Navara to light again, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. So the light... Okay, so you light the way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're going to make your way um, through the maze of tunnels of the deep roads. Hey, Leon's gonna saddle up to Daratham. Did Hard. you say 
Uh, sorry, Hark, did the laughter sound like my master's voice? No. No. Okay. Um, Liam's gonna saddle up to dare them and be like, did you say something about blood? Red blood running over his teeth. I could maybe try to sense if there's any blood in the area. Just The magic I sensed was taint. But then again, I could there could also be blood. But considering your any kind of glances over to Theoban company probably refrain. It's probably wise. I suggest we arm ourselves just in case. Taren draws out his throwing knives. Eh, couldn't hurt. Starts just taking the war hammer off my back. Um, I will go ahead and activate taint magic mode. Um, just early. Because I can just do that and keep that up. Um. I like to think Pasha already had her sword and shield out because this is the deep road. Screw this place. <laughs> But before um, we go, I would kind of also look to um, look to Pasha and Rousseau primarily and say, remember the thing I did to affect Cedric during our dragon battle? I do. I can do it again. I can do it again. Though, if that's the case, probably whoever is affected should not be around other people. All right. Fuck it. Do it to me. All right. <laughs> Not now, but should we get into a combat to everyone else? If you see Russo with black veins and things like that, stay away from him. What? Understood. <laughs> Understood. Do we um, have and, a... And sorry, but just you can see like as the taint magic uh, starts to activate, um, his veins darken and like what was once like just kind of vague outline starts to like blacken up on his skin and just almost seems to like pour off him in like a small smoky blackness. Oh, I don't like that. Oh. Which Just reminds like... me, if one of us accidentally, you know, gets tainted by <laughs> the things down here, do we have a potion or some sort of quick cure? Death. What, you think I don't come prepared? And he pats the little satchel. <sighs> no, as long as I get to you quick enough. We can take care of you. I'll try to keep everyone badgers. If need be. As you guys continue journey forth, Leon, you hear a whisper from your pack. Psst! Leon! My uh, boy! He sort of, you know, hangs back towards the end of the group. Um, then he, you know, like he's rummaging through the satchel, sort of whispers into it. What? I feel... Something's not right down here, and I don't like it. Which is your first time ever hearing Pyrus say he doesn't like something. Like he's almost scared of something. Is it? He doesn't say he's scared, but you can you can tell he's scared of something. Is it in relation to the taint? No, it's something else. It's something different. It's something familiar, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm hearing this laughter, and this laughter sounds very familiar to me. I wish I could remember, but I don't like it. I remember that it's not good. Do you know where it's coming from, or just... No. No. And it's... that's what's bothering me. Okay. Can you sense any fresh blood around? He'll, he'll start um, thinking, uh, thinking about it. Uh, Theoban will be walking with the others. He'll kind of make the comment about um, his, his, him having the uh, potions um, for taint. Um, and I think pr he'll be walking probably closest to Kenna. And so she will notice that his, his ears start to twitch slightly and his, his eyes start darting from um, left to right. Um, he, he looks very disturbed, um, like like he's alert. Um, and he's, he's gonna take a step back, kind of away from the group. 
and suddenly he's going to call out, Wait, get away from there! No! Darkspawn! Darks! The, where did they, where did they come from? I have to get you to safety. I'm, I'm sorry. And he activates his bracer. What? He activates his bracer, and all of a sudden, small like earth slides, pits, earth slides, just open up in the ground underneath you, and you start to. Each of the party members begins to slide down these earth slides to different parts of the chamber. Oh well, shit. shit. <laughs> These are the groups that you end up with. So when you finally land in separate parts of the deep roads, completely separate parts of the deep roads, we have one group that consists of Leon, Dertham, Connor, and Bomb. Liam, Dertham, Connor, and Bomb. We have Kenna, Russo, and Rosie. Um, we have Pasha and Daniel. And then lastly, um, Tyrion, I'm going to say, who is nimble enough to like dodge his slide, he manages to stay with Theoban. Um, and then the slide, the earth slides. After they slide down them, they like close up again. They like seal up. And so, let's start with Tyrion and Theoban. So Theoban is going like darkspawn. Yeah. Like, describe he, what's going on with. He's Theoban. pulled out his longbow and he's he's got like an arrow knocked. Um, ready, and he, Tyrion, who's who's with him, you can see he 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 appears to be like he he seems to think he's surrounded, like he's he's watching his movement, he's watching his steps, he's dodging, he's evading, like there is, seems to be Theoban. some sort of battle going. On. Yeah, and, and like Tyrion, as he dodges the way, like nimbly, just goes, Tyrion, Tyrion, what's going on? Tyrion, move, watch out, it's gonna get you. What? There's nothing around here. <laughs> 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 you, Tyrion, you actually hear, you herself can hear the maniacal laughter echoing through the, the echoing around, and you don't know where it's coming from. It's just bouncing around this maniacal laughter. Who are you? What are you? What are you? Kind of looks around when you heard the, vo- the laughter. Oh, shit. Damn it. They're everywhere. We're overwhelmed. Theoban, there's no one around us, all right? There's no one around I repeat, there's no... He runs up to Theoban, and he's gonna like try to grab him, like just to at least try to calm him down. Calm down. There's no, there's no dark spawns here around us at the moment. Tyr- Tyrion grabs a hold of you, Theoban. You think it's a dark spawn grabbing hold of you? Okay. Um. Well, it's too close for me he, to use my longbow. Um. So I'm gonna use my bracer. So um. Essentially, I'm gonna try to create. Uh, like this, um, this stone wall kind of just breaks out from the earth between them to push him back. <laughs> yes, you will be able to do that to push him mm-hmm. back. <laughs> Tobin, it's me. It's Don't Tara. hand me. It's me. You, you, might, might, you might have me surrounded, but you will not take my daughter. There's no one here. There's no one here, Tobin. Those is on laughter. Uh, you have taken Tira now, too. See. Well, I will die as a guardian, respect with respecting what we stand for, and I will fight. And he will like couldn't start knocking another arrow. Meanwhile, let us go to Kenna, Russo, and Rosie. Um, Rosie is gonna look panicked, and she's gonna say, "Leon, Leon, where's Leon?" Where did everybody else go? They're not here as I'm getting up with like a bit of like blood coming off my forehead. Does your dad normally go that schizo out of nowhere? No, I've never seen him act like that before. That was, that was really strange. That was weird. Ah, are you okay? Is everyone all right? I'm fine. Uh, You too? Oh yeah, I think I'm okay. Oh, by the stone, and my dad's the one that has the, that has the darkspawn taint anti-serum. Oh, convenient. Okay, and I'll sort of illuminate my bracer again, just to get a a general, we can get our uh, bearings. You illuminate your bracer again, and as soon as you light it up, you look up in the ceiling, and you can see two dozen bat-like creatures. It looks like they're sleeping 
up on the ceiling, sleeping. Shh. Okay. Shh. Um, Russo? Rosie sort of like holds onto Russo, like his waist. I'm just gonna wrap my hands. Whatever you do, just stay quiet. Okay. What do we do now, though? Rosie asks. We're, we don't know where we are. We're lost in the deep roads. I'm not familiar with this part of the deep roads. Okay. Well, panicking's not gonna help. Give me one second. <sighs> Kiana. Yeah. You and Theo have gone through this quite a bit, right? Like, just the chambers. Been down here more often than me. A bit, but I mean, we haven't, like, mopped anything. Okay. I'm gonna say we move very slowly and look for a way out of this room first. Okay. Roll. A stealth roll like your life depended on it. Oh I God. know it does. Thank it God. literally does. <laughs> and you make her. That was actually one of the dark spawn. It's, it's, he's friendly. He wants it's to live. Blancher. It's the evil dark spawn. Talking it's about. a little dark spawn fly that has landed on Rousseau's ear. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Those are my anti stealth earth slides. Sorry. It's not great. 12. Okay. Oh boy. So you guys are trying to sneak and you're nearing the end when I'm going to say that Russo, uh, he steps on like, I guess he steps on a root of some sort, like a, a that's basically like a, a piece of wood or like a stick. And then it kind of snaps when he steps on it. And as soon as you do, you hear a s- she like nails against the chalkboard, screeching, coming from the ceiling, and you hear the flitter flatter of wings beating. Oh no! Um, and they start. You can feel the beating of the wings flapping towards you. Run! 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 Yep. Run. <laughs> you guys start to run. Um, Russo, roll me a strength running check. And that's and a con constitution running. running. Oh, constitution running. Kana, roll a constitution running with disadvantage because you're pregnant. Oh. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, darn pregnancy. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, 22 um, of six whoa. points. <laughs> I, right. To be fair, I've ran Eight. from this before, kind of. <laughs> Don't leave me. You're kind of running and so with, is with, Rosie with and Rousseau. With Dixon, could he like, could he like pick can, can up Anna? Can I help? Yeah, no. if you want to pick up, help pick up Kenna, you can. Okay. Roll me a separate strength roll to try to pick her up. Strength might. Strength might, yes. Can I argue advantage if I get rid of all my stunt points from that last one? I'll let you do that. Okay. I'll let you do that in desperation. Let's hope the next oh. one's better. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Slightly okay. better. You're gonna start to like make your way. Rosie is going to attempt to use her biotics to try to create a barrier around many of the bats, but many of them are still like gonna be able to. She's not gonna be able to contain all of them. So, in the interest of time, I'm gonna say that Rousseau will probably take out objection and attempt to at least like start hacking at the bats as they're approaching you. Um, Kenna, what are you going to do to fight off these bat spawn? Um, when we fought these before, did it seem like they were affected by the light at all? They do seem to be affected by the light. Then yes. I will shine so bright. <laughs> and I imagine like Russo carry me and I'm just like spraying like white blinding light at them from behind. You will shine it very brightly and it causes them to hit and they'll just like, just kind of fly banging into walls. Um, which is good because it'll let you like escape and as you guys are making your way in uh, through the one end of the tunnel that you believe um, you might be able to use because basically Rosie's gonna say if we can at least get to this part of the tunnel I can cause a cave-in maybe and seal the way through um, as you guys are making your way there one um, one particular bat is blinded but flying straight towards your direction 
And as soon as it's about to run right into Kenna, I would like for Rousseau and Kenna to make a perception roll, please. Uh, six team of five stunt points. Eighteen. Both of you, it happens quickly, but both of you start to see this greenish glow of light coming from Kenna's belly. And you can see through her belly these tiny green glowing hands. And you can see one of the green glowing hands turn into a fist. And then the green glowing hand kind of makes a punching motion. Um, And as it's making a punching motion, you see this green light turn into a big giant fist. Think Green Lantern. Think Green Lantern fist. And then just kind of goes like socks, does like a hook like punch right against the side of the bat. And the bat goes flying and, and gets flung into the wall. And then the green light dissipates out of Kenna's belly. <laughs> I have no words. Let's go. Right. Can I just can I grab Rosie by the collar yep. and use my two chakra points to like fly us to yes. the to yes. the tunnel entrance? Thank you, Taryn. <laughs> Thank you, Taryn. As you use your You're two chakras to fly out, and then Rosie will be able to use her power to bring down um, a rock slide. And as soon as she does, <sighs> ow! Okay, okay, pain. Pain, 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 pain. As she's like holding onto her I'm head with a migraine. I'm just gonna step Kenna down slowly. Okay. Are you okay, Rosie? Yes. Was that... What was that green thing? Was that like the fist of the maker or something? Oh, no, it's so much better. Oh. Right. So, now we're even more trapped. Ideas, anyone? It looks like uh, Ken and Connor are going to start having to look at uh, circles. Circles of Magi. Oh my gosh, Hark. Oh my goodness. Does that answer your question, Pasha? (laughs) Guys, guys, the baby isn't even out of the womb yet, and he's already a murderer. (laughs) Hey! Yeah, you know, I'm just going to be Kevin for a second and say that baby's already doing magic. Get Ken out of the circle. <laughs> yeah, it's white o'clock. Call on the Templar Obiel. <laughs> when you guys are have take have caught up with your breath, have catched your breath, um, and you're looking at your immediate surroundings in this tunnel, you notice that there is an opening in the ceiling, as if, and it looks fresh as if one of the earth slides opened into this portion of the chamber. And below the hole in the ceiling appears to be, Rousseau and Kenna, appears to be a book. A really odd looking book. (laughs) (laughs) Yes! Oh, yes! I'm going to pick this book up. You're gonna pick the book up and it looks? Very in your in your head, it looks very to Vinter. It looks very to Vinter in your head. Hmm. If I open it up, is it still in like cookbook disguise mode? Yeah, it would look like cook a cookbook to you. And I'm gonna say when you open it up, uh, you'll you'll see the message written to it to Leon in the front cover of this cookbook. Oh. Without a doubt, this is Leon's. Oh, well, that's good. It's a cookbook. I don't think I've ever seen him with this cookbook before. Rosie yeah, there's says. there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Herring pie, da 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 da. Rat stew. I think I've had that one. Hmm. Well, how fortuitous that um we ended up finding it. We wouldn't want him to lose it. It looks like it belonged to someone important to him. Yeah. Whatever. And. Not even thinking about it, I'm just going to wipe the blood off my forehead, then go to put it in my bag. <laughs> you wipe your forehead and you put it in your bag and there's a flash from the book. <laughs> and the book transforms. 
uh, you see a, the book like shaking and then it transforms into as you see the words of the page start to shift and you start seeing strange diagrams like really dark looking diagrams on the pages of this book like and it's but it's the problem is it's written in a language that you don't understand but the diagrams look very um let's just say not very sesame street like <clears throat> it's not <laughs> Oh, my boy, what have you been hiding? What are you looking at, Rosie? Because Rosie can't see it. What are... What? What's going on, Mr. Russo? Uh... Does he, do you show it to Rosie or do you not show it to Rosie? I'm going to think up carefully. I'm going to look back down at the book. The telltale message. The telltale timer. <laughs> telltale yep. games timer. Yep, yep. Do you d show it to her or do you not show it? Well, <laughs> Sam's like, <laughs> yeah, do it, do it, I'm doing it, do it. <laughs> I mean, it'll fuck over Leon, but do it. <laughs> because I want to be able to decipher the diagrams, I'll do it. Realistically. Show it to her? Yep. Wow. That, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like a herring pie recipe to me, Rosie says. What is it? What is this looking at? What's going on? You take a look at it. Um, Kenna, because of your travel traveled knowledge, this looks suspiciously very blood magic-y. Very blood magic-y. Suspiciously. I don't know how Kenna feels about blood magic, but... Oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's bad news, my friend. Bad news. <laughs> um... <laughs> You're sure that belongs to that sweet little child, Leon? There has to be a mistake, Rosie says. There has to be a mistake. This can't be his. The note up front was addressed to Leon. But that doesn't mean that he knows that this isn't a cookbook. Oh? He would have said something to me if he did. I know he would have. Can I roll a cunning to see if I can put it together when I realized something was off about Leon back in the woods? Because you Go confronted ahead. me about that, but I said you had to talk to Leon about it. Uh, can I use my research focus or no? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. 20 with 6. Yeah, you'll be able to- you'll start to put two and two together. <sighs> okay. Rosie, give me the book. Sure, she says, and she hands it to you. I'm gonna take the book, and then without even skipping a beat, I'm gonna smack the cover. Start talking. What? You you do, and at first it doesn't do anything. It doesn't say anything. I've heard you. I know you can do this. What? Roll a roll a communication. Uh, Persuasion, the, intimidation. No, it, intimidation. It, That's strength, intimidation. intimidation. Strength, intimidation. strength, intimidation. Okay. Uh, 14. Roll, Let me see what he gets. 14? 18. He's not... You, you won't be able to get anything out of this book. Um, at least not for right now. Maybe later. Okay. That is a book that you're trying to interrogate. I, I know what it is. Just making sure you didn't bump your head. <laughs> a little too hard. I, I did, but I'm fine. He's just playing hard to get. The book. It's not a normal book. It's a oh, blood no. magic book. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Little Leon. Not so innocent, it seems. <laughs> Rosie looks baffled. Like, she's she's got this look on her face like, no, it it can't be. Like, it, it, it can't be. Like, it's suddenly, it's almost like she feels like she's in a dream. It can't be Leon. Not Leon. Okay. Well, I think we can all agree standing here is going to be pointless, so you two go ahead, I'll make sure to bag this up. Bag, bag it, bag it, bag, bag it up? What do you mean, bag it up? You should bury the thing. Well, we want to keep it long enough just to talk to Leon at the very least. Yeah, I'm sure he has a very good explanation for this. Oh... I hear Cedric in my mind. <laughs> oh, and it's not good. 
Meanwhile, um, <laughs> let's get to... Le- Speaking of Leon, Connor, Leon, Dartham, and Bomb are the other group. And Connor is, again, just like Rosie, he's looking around. Kenna, where's my wife? Where is my pregnant wife? Connor says, looking around. I'm going to immediately try to perception just to see what what I can see immediately in our surroundings. Right now, in your surroundings, um, you basically are in a... Sort of like a... You know, you know that, that part of Orzammar where there's like a river of lava? Like there's like a river kind of lava of, yeah. in Orzammar, kind of? So it's, it's sort of, there's like this pocket of lava. It's, I mean, it's not going to hurt you if you don't get too close, but it does feel warmer down here because of... Um, so with that, we can lava. have kind of a light. So is there anyone, yeah, yeah, of any, anyone, anything in the nearby vicinity? Nothing, nothing of interest or of danger. I don't feel anyone close to us or anything for that matter. No, I don't sense anything from the taint magic. Are there, is there more than one path going out? Yeah, there seems to be uh, two paths. One veering over to your left and one veering off to your right. From where we fell, could I maybe make like a cunning check or something to try to orient of where we slid down versus where the other yeah. slid down? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You have a feeling, it happened really fast with a 60 and I'll say that you have a feeling that um, at least for... Um, that Kenna and friends were more towards the left, and Pasha and Daniel were more to the right. Oh, we're in the middle. Wonderful. Okay, um, so I'm going to say to the others, based on where we fell compared to the others, I think Kenna and her group are this way, but I think Pasha might have been separated. She and Daniel are over this way. I think you're worried about your wife, right? Um, Split up, maybe. uh, I don't think we should split up. Uh, I think that maybe we should go check on the the pregnant wife first, and then we can head on to uh, where Pasha and Daniel are. I'd rather not leave Pasha and Daniel alone in the deep roads. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um. Maybe um the circle mage. Maybe this. Yeah. Maybe the circle mages can go and help them while us darkspawn go to Daniel and Pasha. I don't like it, but I'm fat. Connor says. I Finally. memorize your route to try to meet up back here. Okay. We'll meet up so... here. Then. So you guys are going to split. Who's going which way again? Circle Mage is going to Kenna, Darkspawn going to Pasha. Got it. All right, Pasha's is going to Pasha. Leon, you and um, Connor are, are making your way to the deep roads together. Um, and Connor has his shield out. He's got his wand and his shield out. And he's trying to keep an eye out. And as you are walking, Leon, you actually trip and fall over something. Something cold, but soft. It's a body, isn't it? Um, so Leon looks down slowly. You look down and you see what appears to be Templar boots. Oh no. He slowly looks up more and more. You look up more and more and you'll see a Templar armor, full Templar plate armor and Templar Longsword. And then what do you do? He gulps, sort of takes a breath. He looks up at the head. You try to, but it's missing. Oh dear. You try to, but it's missing. The head is missing. Oh dear. It's fine. Okay. Um... This isn't who I think it is, Connor says, as he, like, flips the body over. Oh, that's... Oh, what the heck? It's almost like whoever it was got ripped spine and all. 
like the head was pulled off spine and all. Oh dear. Okay. Um, Leon's going to um, sort of stumble a little bit, but he's got a vial in his hand and he quickly scoops up a vial of blood. Yeah, go ahead. What are you doing? Connor asks. Oh, I, I'm just a little queasy from everything. If this is who he thinks is, we can't just leave him here. It's, it's not like I can carry him or dig a hole or... Oh, man. We should at least burn him, do you think? Or do you... He's, he looks torn. He says he part of him feels like he should burn him, but the other part of him is looking further towards where his wife is possibly at. Well, forgive my gallows humor, but I don't think he's going anywhere, and I think the living should come first. You're right. Sorry, man, he says, looking down at the body. We'll be back. Hopefully, we'll be back. I'm... Sorry, Sir Garrison. I should have been a better person to you. Come on. Let's keep going, Leon. Connor says as he holds out his hand. Right. Um, when uh, Connor looks away, just um, for the briefest moment, there's a flash of um, gratitude or happiness, and it just fleeting and then it disappears. Daniel and Pasha, Daniel Lento and Pasha, you guys are, have been wandering and Daniel has been very, he's, he's taken point and he's been like, he has a torch and he's like looking around and you guys are trying to look to find the rest of the group. And he's towards to Pasha and says, I don't suppose your group has a separation plan in case you all got separated by any chance no why on earth would we think of that Hmm. well these parts of the deep roads I am actually he turned to said fairly familiar with to some degree I've been down here before that doesn't necessarily help me know where everybody else is still if if we can find an exit then we could send word we could get help sure stay close he says turning to pasha oh uh trust me i i will be and pasha pasha is actually going to activate her guardian mode yeah um so basically that just means that uh daniel gets a plus two to their armor rating and every time he takes damage, I take two points of penetrating damage. Okay. So Sounds that- great. Thank you. He will continue journey, and you guys are going to be going through the deep roads, I would say, for about an hour. Like, just an hour, like, trying to make your way, looking around. And then, suddenly, uh, you start to uh, make your way to what... It opens up. Like, the tunnels open up into this relatively large chamber i guess the size of like a like a small like a, like a, think of a, like a middle school auditorium like a small middle school auditorium it's like relatively large and you see all these bizarre hieroglyphic hieroglyphically looking things along the walls um and um there seems to be like these words in in this language that you don't understand and it's we it's it's creepy because as soon as you enter into this chamber like these sconces with torches start to light up around you and they're like giving off this you know relatively light like burning hue and it's Mm. and you're just in this chamber and and daniel's looking around um curiously at all of this what do you suppose... What do you make of this? Hmm. Um, Pasha's gonna go up to the wall. And are they... When you say hieroglyphics, do you mean like... Are, are they like pictures or are they yeah, like... pictures. Or like little pictures and diagrams of... Uh, depicting... Um, 
Well, roll a history. Roll a roll a history roll. That's a sixteen. Okay. They look kind of Tavintery, kind of Tavintery. Not quite, but that's the best way I would describe it to Pasha. Okay. Um, can she tell what the pictures are showing, or...? The pictures are showing someone... It looks like um, somebody being imprisoned. Someone being imprisoned is what the picture is depicting. Okay. Does... Does the prison look like this room? Like, uh, is there, like, a, a thing with sconces in the pictures, or does it seem to be, like, a completely... Does the pri- the prison does look like this room. Yes, the prison does look like this room. And where is the prisoner in the- like, in the middle, or, like, chained to a wall? It looks like somewhere in the middle, but you can't quite note it. You don't quite see that prison in the middle of this room. It's not there. Okay. Um, I th- Pasha would like indicate towards that and say, I, I think this is showing the room we're currently in. But... Daniel Lento takes a look at it and he's, he says, yes, it looks like you're right. This isn't just any chamber. It's, it's a prison or a tomb. But how to unlock such a thing? Um, Pasha's gonna she's not gonna go right into the center of the room but she's just gonna kind of like edge her way over is there like an imprint of anything on the f- like something yeah. that maybe moved it, it looks like it looks like in the center of the room there's it's faded quite a bit but it looks like it's some sort of like arcane circle sort of like imprinted in there and as you as you, you back up a little bit you start to hear the sounds echoing there sounds echoing of something crunching crunching like chewing against bone and sinew and the crunching is getting louder and louder echoing through the walls is there any place to hide in here uh not much but i will say roll a will save please Oh, dear. Will, uh, willpower what? Like self-discipline, courage, willpower, morale? I'm going to say self-discipline. Willpower, self-discipline. I just want to see what you get. 16. 16? Okay. You're going to... Um, you're going to look around um, to try to hide. And as you turn around, um, Daniel takes his hands and he shoves you into the middle of the circle. And you, as you fall into the, the circle... You end up like sort of freezing in place, almost like paralyzed. And Daniel sort of like begins speaking in a language that you don't understand. He starts chanting something in some sort of language. And um, he pulls out from his uh, pack a jagged looking dagger. And then he walks up to you and he says, daughter of D'Artagnan. I've been looking for you. Your blood, the blood of your father at least, holds the key. The one who sealed us in the first place, Daniel Lento says. And then with that, he takes um, the dagger and he sort of like digs it down like in, in your arm and you try to scream, but you're frozen. It's like you're trying to scream, but you can't, and you're frozen. As he digs it deep and deep into your arm, and the blood starts to pour out from your arm and drips into the circle below. And as soon as your blood hits the circle, the seal starts to glow, and um, it starts to open up. Um, and you just kind of slide out of the way as it opens up. And rising from beneath the seal is this creature. It looks like, it looks like a dark spawn, but way taller than a dark spawn. And out of character, it looks like the architect, but it's not the architect. It's a different 
Yes. Go ahead. Were you gonna say something, Callista? It's, no. I said before, was this... Is this M.O.Z.? M.O.Z.? What? Sorry, what? Madman of Zazakael. Mmm. Well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Me. So... So... Um... The... The, um... The person emerges from it, and he, like, shakes... He looks like a he shakes things off, and... He is, the way he's dressed, he's got a hammer in his hand. And it almost looks like a hammer that a, a forge, like somebody, a, a blacksmith would have. And uh, this being looks towards the room. And then he start, he looks towards Daniel Lento. And Lento starts speaking to him again in this language that you don't understand. And the creature speaks back at Daniel Lento. And you don't catch really anything that he's saying except one word for whatever reason, one word for whatever reason um, sticks in your mind. And he says, Sethius. Sethius is what the creature says to Daniel Lento. And as um, when that happens, the crunching of the bone and sinew gets louder and louder. And in down through the hall is this other darkspawn-looking thing, tall darkspawn-looking thing um, that looks sort of like the architect, but it's not the architect. And he's sort of like hunched over and like jitters about in a very sporadic way. And he has in his hands, his, his jaw is like dripping with blood because he's been gnawing, he's been biting and chawing into something. <laughs> And then, and then he sort of, the, this person like takes his uh, hand and wipes his face and then he just tosses what he was chewing on. It appears to be a head. It appears to be someone's head and you, you can't quite tell whose head it is, but the players know whose head that is. And um, the Daniel Lento turns towards uh, this other creature and he says, Zazika. Um, and is all you can tell from, from what his from what his words say. And then two other beings come in as well. One is dressed um, in what looks like uh, chains. Like he's like around surrounded with chains. And then the other one looks feminine, like like a female uh, person. And this congregation of now five of these architect-looking beings, they start talking in front of you. They just completely ignore you by then, and one of them actually points to you. Like, the, the one in chains, like, points to you. And, um, meanwhile, fortunately, uh, Dertham correctly chose to go towards, uh, uh, Pasha. So he's able to come in and actually can hear with what these people are saying in the hallway, and he can understand uh, what they're saying. As I see this, I'm going to stealth the fuck out of my stealth, because I want to listen to this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, thank God I increased dex. Huh? And it was at this point that death and was like, Pasha can be used as a sacrifice, that's fine. To get more <laughs> player knowledge, this will be fine. Like, I mean, what am I gonna do? So... <laughs> All right, come on, good roll, good roll, good roll, good roll. Okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. 17 with three stun points. Yeah, all right, you'll sneak, you'll you'll stealth your way as you're getting closer to these voices. You're not in the chamber yet, but yeah, you yeah. can hear them speaking. I'll have Balm be like a few steps back because he's not really able to be stealthy, so he'll like be ready to charge in on my signal. So you can hear one of the voices say, Conductor, you're the one who awakened us? Indeed, he says. I've been, I'm sorry that it has taken me so long, but it took a while for me to find the daughter of D'Artagnan. The creature will then respond, I see. Where are the others then? There's only five, where are the other two? Um, mm, mm, mm. We'll talk about that later. 
the female says, as as it seems like as as the one that's going ah, mm, mm, is is y- you realize is coming from the voice of the person that was laughing, and you it, you realize now where you had heard that voice before, Daretham. You had heard that voice before back in ancient Tuvian, because that laughter was known as one of the Magister Sidereals, the Madman of Zazakel. Mm. And um, you will also hear uh, the other voice that had that was speaking with the conductor. The voice then says, "Ah, so the auger is here as well." Yes. Yes. Good. How about the architect? Forget about the architect. Uh, the one in chain says. The architect is not with us. It's all right, the conductor says. The world worry about the architect. The five of us are the ones who will ascend. And the auger says, what should we do with that one? She says, turning to, um, turning towards Basha. And Daniel Lento looks towards it, towards her, and says, we're going to have to dispose of her quickly. Um, we, she can't know what's happening, even though that she doesn't understand what we're saying, but better to be safer than sorry. Um, at this, cast the power of the taint on Balm and have him charge in. All right. And also, if I can, cast it on, um, on, uh, Daniel. Yeah. You so Daniel will... and Balm power the taint. All right. You will, um... Want me to roll? Of the tape. Or... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, this one is for Balm, which... Oh my god. I need a target number of 16, which I have enough, so I will use my chakra to do that. So I have one left. So Balm now has power of the taint. And then I will do it again on... Highbreakers uh, beat, uh, you still succeed. We what? Don't need a pyre. No, need pow- power power of the taint increases oh, right. by two. Oh, right, I forgot. I forgot. Okay. Um, but then I spend two target points to do that because of my thing. And then on Daniel. Oh my God! Seriously. Uh, I will spend my last point to increase it to sixteen. Okay. Um, and that's two stun points. I will bank those two stun points. Um, okay. I need to- so you will basically buff both. You're gonna buff both um, so, Balm and Daniel Lento. So Daniel is buffed. Mm-hmm. Um, Balm is also buffed, and I'm having Balm charge in. However, at the start of their turn, they need to make their willpower self discipline against TN20. If they fail, they attack the nearest creature. Okay. So I'm just having Balm like say, go in, create chaos, and then come out, kind of thing. Do they get to make a save before that, or um, do they have to make it? As it's soon at as... the start. It's at the start of their turn. Uh, it's a willpower self discipline versus TN twenty. You go in and Bomb goes in and he rushes in. Roar! And as he rushes in, you can hear uh, Zazakel the Madman say, "That's that's our masseuse." <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a bit. Bomb is just going to start to like rampaging in. And um, the Magister Sidereals fight him off. He's going to be in rage mode, so it's going to be actually be a little difficult for them. Yeah. Plus, he's got the extra armor and strength and con and stuff. So, Augur, the Augur will shout out and say, "Cepheus, we got what we needed here. Perhaps a strategic retreat is in order." Very well, Daniel says, and with that. He flicks his, with a snap of his fingers, there's a big billow of smoke that appears around the five of them. Uh, 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 will... Daniel, Daniel has to make his TN test. I did, I did. Oh, uh, against I 20? Did. It was a 20? Yep, I did. Damn. Yeah, sorry. Should have so, increased the DC. And so he does, he does, and um, he, they disappear um, in a puff of smoke as, um, as, um, I guess Bomb is going to continue attacking the nearest thing to him, which in this case is Pasha. 
I, I would be in. I would be in there. I would run in front of Pasha. Um, okay. And then I would basically. It's gonna last six rounds. So sure. maybe it was like two, three rounds for them to teleport away. And the yeah, fight, like maybe like so he has three, three to two rounds left. Sure, sure, sure. So you can just deal the damage to me if you want. Pasha's paralysis will dissipate, but she'll still be bleeding heavily. Mm-hmm. I think Pasha's just standing there in like, like there's nothing. Like she's gone so far into shock that there is just nothing there. And she she's ignoring the bleeding and um, I, I think what she would have been trying to do during the paralysis, because she couldn't move, um, she would have been trying to um, reach out to Russo, basically to all of the other avatars, using the song. You can. Because... Yes. I remember that the scaled ones can you read out using the song, so she would have just been like, "Guys, roll, roll me a magic roll." No. Roll me a magic roll. You, yeah, you kind of have to. It's it's all natural. It's all natural. Sixteen. Hey, with six yes. thumb points. I will natural say life. that the other dragon chakra avatars will start to hear a singing, but it's not the same voice that you normally hear. It sounds like. Pasha's voice, and she's singing really well. Like she sounds beautiful, her singing voice. At least this version of her singing, of her voice, and it seems to be leading you towards something in the deep roads. Whether you decide to follow it or not is up to you. But all right, um, but yeah. So as the par- paralyzation fails, and actually Dartham, before Daniel goes off, tries to fire off a paralyzed spell, but it just misses uh, when Daniel disappears. Um, Because I forgot to say that. Um, So, um, and he just immediately stops. And once he's like, he's just pretty much in front of Balm, like knowing kind of what Balm's going to do. So he's just waiting for himself to be pummeled. I can take like 20 damage or something if you want. Pasha is just stunned. She's standing there. She might fall over. Okay. But like, he's not saying anything. Then I think with that, we will end the session there. And we will pick up next time. Well, we're on the BBGs now, guys. <laughs> so now that we reached the halfway point of their campaign, you have now met the big bats, plural. Not just one Corypheus, but five essentially Corypheuses to contend with. Good luck. And man, we don't even have a single Inquisition. <laughs> I'm so happy! I'm so happy!